We're going to discuss amblyopia in this lecture. Amblyopia is a disorder of the oculoneural tracts which results from a disorder to the eye itself. So amblyopia is not a disorder of the eye. It is a disorder of the brain. But invariably, amblyopia results from a disorder to the eye almost all the time. So the problem is that early on in childhood, while the brain is plastic and the brain is making connections from the retina to the visual cortex in the back of the brain, if there are problems from one of the eyes uh, that causes it to see poorly, the brain is going to block out that poor image. Remember that you get two images. You get a, an image from your left eye and an image from your right eye, and they both go to your visual cortex. And your brain is not going to process an image that is incorrect. So, for instance, if you have overlapping because of diplopia, if you have an eye that's seen poorly because of a cataract, the brain is going to suppress input from that eye, and that is amblyopia. And once you pass a certain age, as you get older, your brain is not going to be able to make those connections from the eye to the visual cortex. And so amblyopia is the condition where you no longer, uh, where you're not making the connection from the eye to the visual cortex because of some problem in the eye. So this is a neurologic disorder generally secondary to a disorder of the eye. The good thing is, if it's diagnosed in childhood, it can be treated and those neurologic connections from the eye to the brain can be made and this can be reversed. However, if it's not diagnosed until adulthood, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. So what are the causes of amblyopia? When we're going to go down this, this is pretty much all the things that can go wrong with the eye in childhood. First off, you can have strabismus. And strabismus is where the eyes are not aligned properly. And if the eyes are not aligned properly, they're not going to see the same image, and that results in the diplopia, and the brain is going to suppress one of those images. So the non-dominant eye in the strabismic patient is going to be suppressed, be it left or right. And so you're not going to form connections from that eye. Refractive errors... Uh, can also cause amblyopia. So in the eye with the worst refractive error, usually you have refractive errors in both eyes, but it can be in one eye. The eye that has the worst refractive error uh, will be suppressed. There's deprivation amblyopia. This is where the eye is not seeing uh, because of things such as opacities or long-standing ptosis. That would be pretty rare because usually parents get their kids in to get that treated. But if there's a long-standing opacity, the eye won't be able to see what's around it, and so that's going to interfere uh, with the proper use of the retina, and so that eye's neural connections will be suppressed. And then I just included this in here for completion's sake, toxic amblyopia, would be uh, an amblyopia that's secondary to uh, either a nutritional deficiency, usually it's B or folate, uh, or some kind of toxicity. Deprivation amblyopia is the worst kind of amblyopia that you can have. So this is just a diagram that shows uh, if here we have the right eye, and if, it's, if there's some kind of disease process going on, it's not going to form the neurologic connections to the visual cortex. So what are the symptoms of amblyopia? Well, uh, what you have to do in, getting, uh, in eliciting the symptoms, a lot of times because it's difficult uh, in, uh, to get symptoms out of children or to, uh, to get to, to know exactly what's going on because a lot of times this is going to be in infants and in toddlers. Uh, it's going to be uh, important to uh, rely on your physical exam. So uh, what you should do is work down the causes of amblyopia. So remember first is strabismus. Are there any features of strabismus? Do the eyes look aligned? Uh, are there any uh, abnormalities on your cover-uncover test or on your cross-cover test? 
Second, are there unequal red reflexes? That can indicate a strabismus. Are there any lenticular opacities? Is there a family history of any pediatric eye diseases? A lot of the refractive eye diseases, as well as strabismus, have a hereditary component. And it's important that all children are in at six months of age to have their first eye exam. That's recommended by the American Optometric Association. And optometrists are much better at diagnosing this stuff than we are, but we should be aware of it. In an older child, it's easier to elicit symptoms. So they can complain of blurry vision. Uh, they also could have difficulty distinguishing letters or numbers on the Snellen test. They may have learning difficulties, and that can start as early as three or four years old when uh, they're starting to have to distinguish uh, shapes or letters. Uh, that can be delayed. And certainly it should be noticed by first or second grade when they're starting to have to learn how to read. The way that this is diagnosed is by formal optometric examination. The diagnosis of amblyopia really can't be made in a, in a pediatrician or doctor's office because it requires specialized equipment. However, um, there are some symptoms and some features that can uh, lend us towards this diagnosis and refer a child uh, to an optometrist. And that's where an appropriate diagnostic battery can take place. So the treatment for amblyopia is, of course, coordinated care between an optician and an ophthalmologist. An optician is going to be the person that can prescribe corrective lenses, contact lenses even. They're uh, prescribing those even in seven, eight-year-old children. Uh, and the ophthalmologist can take care of any surgical problems uh, of the eye, so any cataracts or opacities. Another thing that's done, and this is going to be really important in addition to correcting refractive errors, uh, another thing that's done for uh, amblyopia is to patch the non-amblyogenic eye. So that you patch the eye that's seeing properly and leave the eye that, is, uh, that had the disease process going on in it. And what you do then is you force the amblyogenic uh, eye the eye that had problems to it, you force that eye to do all the work. And by doing that, you increase the neuronal connections to the visual cortex. There are surgeries that can be done if uh, strabismus is the cause, and that can be undertaken at the direction of the ophthalmologist. Visual acuity improvement should be followed closely. Amblyopia is a difficulty with seeing detail, and so the optometrist can follow that. And the best results are seen, as mentioned, in young patients who still have the neuronal uh, plasticity and, of course, in patients who are compliant with treatment. So these are children with the eye patch. Uh, this is a child who has refractive error here on the right, and so he also has his glasses on. Um, and all children with refractive errors should have glasses or contacts uh, that's important in the treatment as well, but then this patching of the uh, what was the dominant or non-diseased eye uh, is important in the treatment because then you force the bad eye to, uh, to create neuronal connections.